that's me again, Dorota Polska International New Artist and Educator here and today we are in with Carol. So she had some nails they are four weeks old and we've got some chrome on them as well. So you can also see it how the chrome lasted as well. We have lost a couple of the gems, <laughs> just the two here and then some in this one, but we've got one in a perfect um condition and we don't know yet what we are going to do. Uh, so first of all, I will just quickly show you how I kind of file the gel of them and uh, on a one or two nails and then I will finish the rest of my own and then I show you the design part. So I'm just clipping off the tips with the, uh, not the tips, the <laughs> gems with the cuticle nippers. So they don't give a fire sparkles when I file them with the e-file. Well, really stubborn ones. I actually quite like this design. It was nice and subtle, not over the top. Good for this time of the year, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> Lovely. So basically when the client comes back for a rebalance, my main thing to do is make sure there is no lifting on them and um, they are all nice and fresh again. So I'm using my safety bead to remove the product on the nails. And I'm always protecting the client's nails folds to make sure I like they don't get any cuts and I'm removing the color would you like them any shorter a bit short. just a little bit so if the clients want the nails a little bit shorter I would remove a little bit more from the free edge because when we file them then they become much thicker And you don't want the bulkiness of the product at the free edge. They're actually quite nice and intact, so I don't have to file a lot. It's basically just to file the color off. But if there will be a lifting, uh, then I will have to get rid of the lifting as well. Maybe there will be some, so I will show you how to do that as well. We will see. So I'm also supporting a client nail from underneath as well. I don't want them to feel any kind of vibration. I mean, this e-file is brilliant, like it has no vibration, but still when we're going pretty quick, Keeping my eyes shut. Good afternoon, Mr. Yes, it is. No, you can just pop in. We've got a really large waiting area. No problem. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, so next one, the farm. And also, this nail is brilliant. You have guys asked me about it as well. What about the nails growing down the way? So, I will also show you how I do the filing on, in general, on all the clients, I do it kind of this way. Because uh, even she wants the nail reach a certain length, they all tend to go down a little bit. So with the shorter nails, it is very easy to fix it and it doesn't take as much time. With the longer nails, I would still recommend it just cut it uh, off and start fresh again. Because you wouldn't be able to um, correct it as much with the longer length. You have guys asked me a lot uh, question about the nail fan as well. 
So this one isn't the best one I have used. Um, I have had some before, so much better one, but I was so bad looking that I replaced it with the brand new one. But I'm not 100% happy with this one. I mean, it does collect some dust, but um, it isn't as good as my previous um, previous um, dust collector. So I'm I'm still in the process of searching a better quality one. And once I find it. I will do some tutorial for you, like when I'm comparing some different ones as well. Okay, I've got some lifting on the side in here, which is very good because then I can show you things as well. So I'm going to start removing the color first. And then I'm not filing straight on the lifting. I need to fan out first of all the place just before the lifting and then I can just touch it up with the file. And that's it. I'm going to leave it because it is a one move of the file or even like with the finger when it's going to come off. If you would touch it with the file, you could over file the sides uh, and then the nails wouldn't last as well because the better condition the natural nails are, the better any kind of products last on. So. Like my main priority always for a client's nails is to make sure they are not damaged uh, so they can return for the rebalance constantly and have a nice nails all year round. I wouldn't recommend the removal of the extensions. If they're all intact, you just kind of keep carry on. And Carol have been a good example. I mean, before the lockdown, how many years you have been coming? <laughs> years, isn't years. it? <laughs> yeah, years. <laughs> like so, um, and that's... Uh, quite nice chrome as well so you have seen me doing tutorials on the chrome application um, and for a chrome I use the one coat black and it's amazing black guys um, just so the color kind of pops up more and after I apply the chrome I always scratch the free edge to make sure there is a nice uh, adhesion of the top coat to it uh, so it's last nice and long time on the client's nails So my next step is just to remove the dust and I quite like to use the dehydrator which is a blue scrap on the entire surface of the natural like nails and extensions to remove any oils before I start filing with the hand file. But let me but let me show you so I will just do a pinky and then I will do the sorry Carol and then I will do the index finger so I will shorten the free edge a little bit blend everything on the natural nail like I want the gel to be nicely blended in and that's it that's my nail ready for a fresh gel application almost but let's concentrate oh no I will do it all of them So when I'm holding the file, I kind of tend to go from underneath of the nail. So this way I can lift the nail up. And doesn't matter if the nail grow down or not, that's, that's the way I like to file them. Making sure everything is blended in. tiny bit of the lifting on this side so I want to get rid of that as well okay and then the filing from underneath to straighten the nail so this way we can lift the nail higher up blend everything
slim the snail out a little bit. Okay, and this one I show you from the side view first. So it looks like this and then the other side. So you can see it's kind of tends to grow down a little bit. And to get rid of that, I need to lift the snail up. So I'm not filing much off from the land. It's more like filing from underneath. Carol is keeping the hands pretty stiff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now blend that all out. And just by filing underneath, we can improve the kind of shape from the side because then we can just fillet it up and they don't grow as much down. So that's the quickest way. Uh, you would fix the meal which is growing down a little bit but as I say if if the clients would want like much longer meals uh, then it becomes kind of too time consuming maybe not tricky but just waste of time because you have to build up the meal from the top and then file it from under meal underneath uh, of the meal with the e-file so a really time consuming process and it wouldn't last you for a long time because by the next time they come back for a rebalance you will have to do it again. So really uh, not effective way of fixing the nails. I know it's a nice way of selling a training or something, uh, but I don't know. I, I just feel like it's a waste of the time. So if you just cut it and put a fresh extension, uh, if it's a longer nail, that will last you for probably three times rebalance and um, it's more time effective. Rather than trying to fix something. It's the same when you're doing a French kind of manicure. Um, you sometimes better off just if, if it didn't work like take it off and start again rather than trying to fix it and uh, and yeah and that's what I feel about correction of really growing down nails so small correction no problem large correction start again but by doing this trick from filing underneath uh, it's really the shape of the nails is much, much to improve. And also like once the nails start growing longer, obviously, um, they might be maybe um, a little bit of the discolorization on the natural nail underneath. So by going with your file like this, you, you tend to file it uh, a little bit away as well of this natural nail and kind of seal it uh, better. So I highly recommend filing from underneath I was supposed to show you one or two nails and you're a long time with me <laughs> we actually need to think what color we want to put in on them what do you fancy just tell me the color at least <laughs> Something brighter, something more nudey, something pink, something blue. Something nudey. Something nudey. Oh, okay. Something nudey. I will think something off. <laughs> Actually, nudes are my favorite colors and I love it the most on my nails as well. See, I, I get spoiled by my clients because they always come in and they always say like, oh, just do whatever you want. <laughs> I 
Okay. And then the thumb. Actually, your thumbs are pretty nice because most of the clients' nails, the thumbs would grow down and yours grow really nice and straight. <laughs> Now I have done the rebalance after another girl on those nails and I can see that the most of the lifting is kind of close to the free edge. And that indicates for me two things. Either those nails are prone to lifting at the free edge where the natural nail is. Um, and I need to be very careful capping the free edge on them. And then I will see if, if it doesn't happen, that's, that's mean maybe it is the place where the tip is kind of growing out and is becoming looser so I really need to file that off and replace with the fresh gel just so the water or anything doesn't get trapped underneath of that this is always very important like and uh, rebalance is pretty difficult for the beginner nail technician because I mean obviously I have filed it more in here and more in there so this nail isn't even so we apply the gel differently on every single nail uh, so it needs quite a lot of skill obviously so after i have done this part i will take my um e-file bit and do a little bit of the cuticle work uh, just before we put the gel and then search for any other shiny places so i don't do the cuticles uh, too heavily before i start filing um i mean you guys who watch me long long time know that I kind of tend to leave it more to the end and then I might maybe lift it so you can at least see one nail or two pretty close I hope it is in focus So I'm just doing one side You've got actually pretty nice cuticles I must say <laughs> And then the other side So I'm not going like this I'm really nice and flat to the nail And I'm only removing the part which is on the nail plate So I'm only removing look the bits and pieces which are on the nail plate because that's the place where I'm going to put the gel I'm not going to put it over the cuticle I'm just going to put it on the nail plate so one side I can also kind of uncover nicer cuticle shape And this is the first stage of my cuticle work. So I do it always in two stages. Uh, sometimes I need to do it in three stages. Uh, we get those clients which would have a cuticle up on the half of the nail plate. Yes, I would cut it, like trim it at first before I apply the gel because obviously it's too much of it. Uh, but in the case of the normal nice cuticles, that's my process. my next step is to check for any shiny places I want the nails to last a nice time so I'm taking the file and I'm just checking I'm like kind of going like this and keep checking that's it keep checking for any shiny places if there is any shiny places the gel might lift from those from those places and we really don't want that also checking for any other places which could become loose so this is almost like checking um, after yourself it doesn't take me long it takes me what I don't know like you could check the timer on the on the video it takes me three five minutes and um, by some kind of double checking on ourselves if they definitely good and ready for a gel application 
<clears throat> at this stage I never also do my final shaping um, so I'm not bothered about the shape 100% uh, because I will start shaping the nails I mean I do bother a little bit but uh, they are not perfect at this stage yet um, so this stage is only to blend the product in and then with the gel application I will start <clears throat> Sorry guys, it's those masks on. And with the gel application, I will um, start shaping my nails and then I will file them for a perfect shape. So I remove the dust. And now again, the nail dehydrator, which is a blue scrap. Nice and squeaky. Extra nail dehydrator. So those extra one just goes on the cuticle area. And then we are going to use the universal air bond. And that gives me a nice adhesion. So I only apply it on the places where I've got the natural nail and some places is more like where I have to file the places which was lifting and it's mainly on the sides and some of the free edge plus the growth area. It dries in the air so you kind of give it a couple seconds for it to dry and then we can move on into the gel application. Something new, the something new D with maybe uh, some gold flakes okay I'm kind of starting creating an idea in my head <laughs> um, so I'm using the fiber gel light rose <clears throat> so as you can see I'm not happy with this fun 100% there is lots still lots of dust left um, and the previous one was much much better now, first layer, so tiny bit of the product on my brush, nice and thin layer, like squish it into the nail. Now this infill isn't uh, the easiest one, because um, I had to file quite a lot of product. Sometimes I get the clients where I can do it all in a one go, so I would put a thin layer, fill up the gap, that's it done. And I might maybe show you like some of those type of clients as well, but I think that harder the maintenance is the more you can learn from it so that was actually a good example so I have to make sure I've got all my free edge cap because that's where the problems was with the nails and then once this layer is in I can put it inside the lamp and then do exactly the same uh, on, on this one so nice and thin layer um, nice and thin layer oh yeah i will be ah uh, hi. <laughs> hi yeah uh, nice and thin layer mm. and then nice and thin layer you can see how my brush kind of twists and almost goes underneath of the of the nail so pressing pretty decent with my brush So here straight away I need to kind of add it on into the free edge quite a lot. Perfect change. Now I'll try to zoom it in for you guys. So bear with me. Nice and focus I hope. So I take another very thin scoop of the product. I hope that's it. I hope you can see it. Usually I try to keep the client hand down the way. So nice and thin layer. Another small scoop, oops, gel run, because I need to build up my apex again. So I'm starting from the top, very little pressure, really little pressure, filling up the missing part, and then 
press it a little bit harder to smooth it out. It's not perfect, but by the time it goes to lamp look, it starts self-leveling. And that's it. Don't overdo it. Change your hands. <clears throat> so we don't want to spend ages fixing your gel. I will try to zoom it. Gosh, I just hope it's in focus, guys. Patrick, I need you. Oh, he's not there. So nice and thin layer. Pick up the scoop of the product. Again, I put it on the side so you can see the side view of the snail. Filling up these gaps. And then smooth it out. By the time I put it to the lamp, a self-leveling look. Change. <laughs> okay, and now I do it on my normal speed. So cap those free edge. Got the bits and pieces on the side which annoys me but i'm not going to touch them the now until i put the fresh gel on the snail so one side other side one side other side perfect change <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been very uh, helpful. <laughs> so the client needles goes down and this way the gravity helps me as well. Um, sometimes when I get the people for the training with me, um, we try to do as little movement of the brush as possible just to show them that the product should work for us. Change. That it is a product which should work for us rather than opposite way. Can you put your hand just a tiny bit more inside the one which is in the lamp? All right. Perfect, <laughs> thank you. It's just uh, I'm always worried about the fan. Now this new is missing quite a lot on the side and then on the top. So again, we've got different and plus here as well. So we have to apply the gel slightly different on this new as well. So nice and thick product there going more to this side to fill up this missing gap and then I've got something there see the time when you have to re remove the contact from your brush is the hardest um, the brush from the gel is the hardest part because then everything goes wrong <laughs> I need to fill up this gap and I need to add on into this free edge to fix it. Perfect change. <laughs> um, also the shadow, like when the needles are lifted too much, it's kind of give you a shadow so you can't see it what you're doing. So I tend to always lie my client's uh, hands back, uh, like into my hand. So quiet with no radio on and so one side other side smooth it out at the free edge change and because i keep the heating on all day long like it's pretty warm in here so you can also see how the gel behaves like and i will show you because we are getting into those winter months now um, I will be showing you different consistency of the gel as well and you will be seeing me working with completely different techniques and different uh, speeds. So the, the warmer the gel is, the quicker you have to work. And actually this is a perfect consistency of the gel for me. I love it when it's so runny, change. Because it's just like you kind of slap it on and, and that's it and the gel does the work for you. Um, why when it's a bit colder you have to work it through the gel more you kind of have to give it a bit more massage to to even even it out and another good tip oh gosh got something there another good tip I can give you guys is like when we've got the um, when we're doing acrylic nails and I promise I will do record some acrylic and I will do record some poly gel nails as well change um, you tend to pick up the bit on the one side of the brush and exactly the same thing applies to the gel. So you wouldn't go to the pot like this and have the gel in a kind of messy way. 
uh, you would work with the one side of the brush because if you've got the product on the one side of the brush you tend to have more control over it so see I've got some bits and pieces in here but I want to apply this gel first then press it harder so I can wipe it off those bits and pieces and I always keep some small wipe in here um, so I can keep my brush in shape and all good now let's do apex for the thumb maybe a little bit more and again depending on the size of the product you need you will pick a bigger bit or smaller bit you can also even wait for it to to kind of place into the right place into the gel and maybe i show you what is wrong as well so if you start applying the gel like this look i have created holes like and it's going to be so difficult first of all i'm introducing the air bubbles into the product and and the product is going to take me some some long time playing with the strings yes it is going to take some time okay let's try to be nice like i think it's just so much time consuming and by the time you finish doing it all this gel is going to run into your cuticles um so i find it like when we don't overwork the product that's where we get the best results and i know i've got the wee hole in there but I can always file it so I don't want to spend too much time because now this is starting to be risky for the gel to start running change so instead of going like different thickness of the pressure and stringy movements go nice and thin press the product hard so it can kind of really attach it into the nail and now build build up your structure by picking up a decent scope don't lose the contact with your brush so once the gel goes on it take into the consideration that you cannot go right down to the side because by the time you put it to the lamp the product is going to run in there so you don't want the product to be there because it will get there on its own and then a missing part can you see how the gel is spreading to the sides and imagine if i would go closer you're only working to the middle look the gel is sliding to those sides and you can always help it a little bit now i'm filling missing corner perfect change and that's them ready for a shaping so what i'm going to do is i will shape one or two nails and and then finish them on my own and we can move on into the next part which is a design So I'm just removing the inhibition layer, put my fan on, and the filing, nice and straight. Okay, so this way, again, I will try to, nice and straight, nice and straight. So this way I can see it, that this nail goes this way, <laughs> because I have created those lines, like that's how the nail follows. So now I need to remove this side because it's more actually black gloves are amazing for shaping the nails lifted it up from underneath and this is where the most of the shaping is done like when the shape has changed the most so file around the cuticle area like file it nice because you want all this product to be so blended in that you cannot see the place where it starts lift it hairline and check for overall shape thin out those free edge we don't want it to be too bulky okay then take a buffer I will do one by one and just buff the snail With the buffer touch up the free edge if you're really fussy and 
and this nail is finished and I'm going to do the same on this one because that was a tricky one which I didn't like so I had those bits and pieces I didn't want to remove them at, um, at the previous stage because they was really difficult to remove them and if anything's like this is happening then I rather to do it after I place the gel uh, so the nail is kind of more solid so shape this side because that was the place which did annoyed me okay and now the usual nice and straight nice and straight so I can see I've got more here I can see how misshaped the free edge is I've got quite a lot of bulk on this side blend everything around the cuticle area check those hairline view and it's brilliant because it shows you all the places which needs touch up And then buff the nail. So if I'm buffing really quick, uh, you can see it. Um, there is no way I can cut the client. I'm filing more over my fingers rather than the client. And I'm brushing away the sides. So I'm brushing away any product which might be there. I take a file and sometimes I need to touch it up at the corner. I need to blend it all nice around the cuticle area. And you can see it. I'm also even pushing the cuticles more so when I apply the gel polish is going to be going right to the end in there and the growth is not going to be as visible because it's going to be much flatter because we've got only those nice and thin layer there so the apex goes gradually okay and the next one oh that was the missing one as well so you can see how like with every single step we can kind of improve the shape of the of the new Okay, I'm just going to do, so some nails I don't have to file as much as the others, like uh, I can go and straight move into the buffing because they are better shape. Uh, and yeah, I will do the cuticles works as well and then I can spend some time with Carol so she enjoyed this visit as well because I think she's a bit, uh, a bit shy now. So... I will kind of train them up and honestly there is not much not much to be done because I'm not the fan of excessive work and obviously with the e-file plus with the filing later on we've got quite a lot of uh, of it removed anyway so you really kind of perfecting it up Yeah, I'm going to finish it all on all of the nails and then come back to you with the design so I can spend some time with Carol as well. <laughs> so that's the nails filed and now we are going to apply the color over them and do some nice cozy design. So I'm going to use the color from the Neil Perfect 100, 143. Uh, so in voted it will be still the same number, just a new um, new coverage. So it's kind of like a very nice nude color, like almost white. Yeah. 
and we're actually going to do a nice and pretty cozy design. We have been also talking like how dark it is getting already outside and how we don't want to get up in the morning from the from the bed. <laughs> I bet you guys feeling the same. Carol is also those kind of clients which tend to keep her hands stiff and I might actually give you guys some tips as well. So at first don't try to fight with the client hand because otherwise like your wrist will just get dead and um, I tend to kind of shake it a bit and then and then people just <laughs> yeah they don't to, realize you do that. Yeah, of course you don't. Like I mean and I think most of the time it's just because you want to help me. I um I find it with most of the clients so um that's that's the main reason why why they would tense up the hands uh, but yeah I try to don't don't fight with it because otherwise my hand would be just too tired so I once I feel it it starts becoming too heavy on my hand I would kind of um, shake it a little bit another reason why the hand might be stiff as well you are tiny so your hand is too straight in the guys I'm gosh have no enough room but when the hand is bended like this and you're trying to push the furnitures you wouldn't push it strongly but when your hand is straight and you would push on something you would push it really strong and it's the same with the client's hands if their hand is too kind of straight um, they've got more power to push on your left hand so always remember that that's if the client has a hand bended and uh, what is this place? Elbow? Elbow. So when the client has a hand bended in the elbow, they would uh, keep less pressure on your left hand. If their hand is straight in the elbow, they would be able to move the bed and move the wardrobe uh, on the straight hands. And that's what it feels on your wrist as well. So a good tip for you. Now, when painting always kind of nudie colors, light colors, white colors, uh, you have to be kind of really nice and precise with the application because uh, those kind of colors shows any kind of mistakes. Same the red. So I'm really taking my time with the application. I'm not bothered about the middle. So basically I'm always... Um, First of all, concentrating on the sides, around the cuticles, and then leave the middle on the end. Perfect, and set. And I hope you, you're going to enjoy this new art design as well i quite like doing it for this time of the year and it's always a really nice looking one and you still don't know what it is i mean no you probably um yeah my lady doesn't know what it is yet <laughs> and you guys have seen the th uh, thumbnail so that's why you're watching this video um yeah, and you will know soon how to create this look. <laughs> also, if you're new in here, hit the subscribe button to don't miss uh, future tutorials from me as well. So usually I record either in the house and then you get a kind of better quality uh, videos because Patrick is holding the camera nice and close. And um, the ones from the salon when I'm recording on my own. But I'm trying to improve the quality of those videos, like and uh, and setting up better camera camera view, just so you can see more as well. And thank you so much for like all your subscribers and all your subscriptions and all your shares as well because your the channel is growing with every single share as well and if you recreate this look hashtag Dorota Palicka as I'm kind of collecting all your work 
and uh, again I will be putting those nice videos with everyone works because like I think each of you got a different type of interpretation and it's really so nice to see so many design recreated as well so thank you so much keep those designs coming up i'm really loving watching into them sometimes i have maybe not time even for a wee feedback or um uh, for the uh, comments but uh, if i see them i always will kind of try to like them change Oh, a second layer and now on the pinky we are going to do a nice sugar effect on the ring finger we are going to do a nice knitted look Making sure I put the polish right to the corners. And also checking if we're still in a camera view. It's a very tricky application. It's almost like putting white on the nails. Have you had some sugar on your nails before? Sugar effect? One strike, but no, a full one, just half a one. <laughs> Change. So when I'm painting clients' nails, I really tend to pull this down like those nail folds so I can really apply the product nice and everywhere. It's actually starting to be nice and warm in here. <laughs> I couldn't hit up on, on the, earlier in the morning. It's cold in the mornings. Yeah. I was thinking even on jumping on a wee sunbed to just to hit up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the last one. I keep touching this camera. Sorry, guys, if it shakes a bit. I should also um, record the behind the scene so we can see in awkward positions. I mean, <laughs> change your hands off. Oh. Okay, now is the time for the uh, for the designs. So we are going to do some sugaring and we are going to do some all your interesting things on those nails. Oh, I'm actually quite, maybe we will do sugar and okay, I changed it my mind. So we're doing sugar here. We do sugar there. We do mermaid look on this one and then we do knitted look on this one. Okay, lift your fingers up. So for these designs, I always would ask the clients to lift the fingers up a little bit. And then for sugar, I'm just sprinkle on the top. Okay. 
go to the side a little bit. Perfect. Now other side. That's it. Change your hands. Then the sugar, 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 sugar here. To the side. Perfect. <laughs> Other side. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> that looks awesome. Change your hands. Now this one. Just, no, no, I need to kind of, just relax it. That's it. So for the mermaid effect, I'm dabbing first. I'm dabbing first in. <laughs> it's okay. I'm dabbing first in the needle. And then once it's dabbed in, I can start rubbing gently. So very gently, very gently. Okay, once I have done this part, same like we did it for a chrome, if we wanted it to last. Give it scratch to the free edge. Clean with the brush. And then apply the top coat. So I would always do it this way. And then um, they would last me nice and long time. And I love the kind of wet look to it. Absolutely stunning. Especially over this color. Change. Then the Mermind is going to go on the middle. No, it's okay. No, no, that's it. So tap, tap, tap. Okay, then I'm going to clean my finger a little bit. And the best way is to do it with your finger. You get the nicest results. Okay, scratch the surface because the gel doesn't stick into the shiny surface. Clean it all well. Then make it shiny. That's oh, nice, really nice. Cap the free edge properly. Change. Now I need to apply the top coat, so I'm just taking a clear um, top coat, like not uh, the one which might have a bit of the dirt, and now I forgot. No, I didn't. Okay. So this one needs the top coat. This one needs the top coat. And so does the fam needs the top coat. Uh, yes, I just check for you. Okay, and then the next ones. So I don't think so. I have. I did. Okay, just the thumb. Sorry, guys, I get lost a bit. <laughs> Yeah, so just a summary. For this look, you want to top coat it. So uh, for the Mermaid look, you put the Mermaid over the inhibition layer of the gel polish to get this look. To get this look, you apply the top coat and before you cure it, you sprinkle, change. And to get this look, which we are going to create in here, you would uh, do the design on top of the top coat. So different, actually quite a few different techniques, which is also my thing. 
So I'm using my Guilarnero beautiful brush and paint on French gel. And paint on French gel is absolutely fantastic for this type of for this type of designs. So nice and decent size. You don't want it to be too small. You want it to be kind of visible because we are going to do it with the sugar as well. So basically what um, the easiest way to learn this design is kind of imagine you are painting number fours. This is the easiest way to explain it. So I'm just painting number fours. And honestly, like there is no better design for this time of the year. A nice line. Line on the other side. Perfect. And after we have created this, we take the mermaid powder again and we sprinkle it. <laughs> You can't go wrong with too much of it. Oh, change. So it doesn't look nice yet because we need to clean the mermaid powder so you will be able to see the design. Um, but I love it. I, I just totally love this, this look. Let me get close to you so you can see it. There we are. So. Number four. And then tiny wee line on the top. Obviously the small um, the smaller, the slower you will paint, the nicer results you will get. And I don't want those lines to be too thin. Um this design wouldn't look nice with two thin lines. And another two numbers four, one. Actually, this brush is so precise that I would probably even prefer working with a bit thicker one for a thicker line so I don't have to go over it so many times with this design. But if you want to go thicker with the fine liner, then just kind of press it harder so you'll leave a more product on the nail and then the other side might actually do it on this one as well can i see your other hand for a second no i don't do it I don't do it. <laughs> okay, put this hand back inside. So for sugar, you always give it double cure. And um, 
for a mermaid, uh, mermaid to be wrapping, just a normal curing time for your gel polishes. Um, and then for a sugar effect, give it double cure, so like even 60 seconds uh, is good, just so it cures nice. Okay, and it looks a bit messy to start off, but then once it's cured, we can clean this design and it's, it's going to stay on. Like, I mean, I have, it is going to stay on. <laughs> Um, same like crumbs, uh, you guys asked me how long the crumbs lasted, so you can you can also see it on this lady as well. And uh, have you been doing everything normal, just dishes and mm -hmm. yeah? Yep, I'm about to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just double checking, you know, <laughs> so they can uh, know as well. Change your hands. Okay, so this one is the finish it look and let me just wrap uh, away the mermaid powder so you can see the design is only the glitter is only sticking into the uh, part which we painted in white and the rest is nice and clear color and it is not going to come off even if we don't top coat it because that's the bonus of the paint on French gel um, it is not going to come off on the sugar nail what I like to do is at the end as well, take a file, give it a couple scratches and then clean it well. Okay, just so we remove any kind of uh, bits and pieces of the dust. And yeah, that's that's the look which we have created today. So something very nice and nudie, delicate and still elegant. Like I quite like it. The fact is like not over the top, um, but uh, it is really nice and pretty I may actually even do it so this is a blue scrap uh, that's the product I'm using for a nail dehydration so it's a pretty strong and harsh product so I'm just going to show you it's not going to make it I have damaged the wipe but this is not going to come off so it's still nice and shiny <laughs> Okay, and I take the other hand. And I like the fact also, um, I like the fact also that we have, ch oh no, I didn't put the top coat on this one. <laughs> I actually didn't put the top coat. Oh, I love when the things happen. Okay, so. I need to really clean it at well because I didn't put the top coat on the gel polish. And the mare mind that sticks in into the gel polish as well. So I've got two options. File it off and just do it again. Or fill up the top coat just on the gel polish part, not touching the sugar effect. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fill it up with the top coat. Oh, to be how me. Too many things happening at once, eh? Phone calls and all and... So yeah, if you do this mistake as well, and I checked it, <laughs> then I put the top coat and I touched this one, I didn't touch the other one because I thought, see, that's actually the choice, but well, it's okay. So I'm taking a small brush now and I need to apply the top coat on the gel polish. But you can also see, actually maybe even good that it did happen. Actually, I love when the things happen. Um, you could also see that I have washed off the mermaid from the gel polish, but it didn't come off from the paint on French gel. Just because it stays on solid on paint on French gel.
They're pretty time consuming now <laughs> going around those bits and pieces, but at least you know it how to fix it if something similar happened to you as well. Because that would be the quickest way to fix it. Uh, another option it would be you would just buff the needle and start again. Like the design part and then apply one coat of the color, top coat and then do the design. It will be too time consuming. Perfect. Cook it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I might actually touch it up this one as well. So always but uh, when I finish the service as well, when I'm cleaning, I might find maybe some bits and pieces which I'm not happy with. That's better. So I could touch them up just to perfect kind of look and a shape um, of the nails. Clean the hands with the baby wipes and I always love um, using them at the end of the service, especially before the painting, um, the pictures as well. But So you just remove like any dust which might be on the client's hands because then it just doesn't look nice and right on the pictures. You don't want dust going over them. And then massage the cuticle oil into them. I would actually fancy kind of similar thing on my nails as well, like as such as mine colors. Uh, and I had Mermaid on, on top of the very light nude colors as well. That's this cooked as well. Okay, so this design is fixed now and it has the top coat and it's all working perfectly. But what I why I wanted to show you two hands is like, I like the fact we have to, um, swapped the designs. So it looks really nice and pretty um, when they kind of swapped and we've got... Uh, them in each different finger. I think that looks super cool. Okay, I'm not going to keep you bored anymore uh, We are going to take a nice and beautiful picture of those nails and I hope you have for a th thumbnail And I hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial if you did let me know down in the comments below and uh, Yeah, um, give you literary hugs and I'm looking forward to see you again next time. Bye